this week we saw Discord double down on their policy of inshitification, and we're gonna talk all about it. Plus, some new Steam Deck and SteamOS updates clue us into the future of PC gaming. And what's going on with Ubuntu? All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux gaming news time. All right, the first thing I'm gonna talk about today is actually about this setup. Uh, I'm doing something different, I'm trying something new here because frankly, I'm getting tired of uh, doing the same old, same old news style. So this is gonna be different. Uh, and I have a new video coming out that's over 30 minutes long. Uh, it's coming out on Monday and there's a preview of it right now over on my Patreon and over on the Bryant blog. You can check it out. It's an entirely new style of video. It's a lot like this actually. And I'm actually looking forward to getting feedback from people because uh, I'm excited about it. It's different and it's energizing. It's important to note that it's exclusive for members. So if you're a patron, if you're a YouTube member, or if you're a subscriber over on uh, the Bryant blog, then you can uh, get access to the video early. It's been up actually for a few days now. I've probably spent 10 work days, uh, like actual full eight hour days working on this new video. I'm really excited about it and I'd love to get your feedback. So if you're a member of this channel, you can use the link below to find uh, that preview. It's very exciting. I can't wait for you guys to see it. All right, now the first bit of news this week that I wanna talk about is actually the uh, the fact that Discord continues uh, its quest to betray their users. Uh, their CEO and founder, Jason uh, Citron, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I don't have a lot of respect for that guy. So I'm not, I don't really care if I mispronounce his name wrong. So this guy has decided that he's going to step down as the CEO of the, uh, the, the, the Discord Corporation and um, he's gonna become a board member instead and an advisor to the CEO. Now, this is of course because in their uh, quest to destroy Discord for profit, Jason's gotta be one of the beneficiaries of that, right? So he's on the board, great. Replacing him is Humam Sakinini. Sorry if I mispronounced that wrong too, bud. But this is a familiar name in the gaming industry. Uh, if you know anything about Activision, he was one of the guys in a key position from 2012 to 2019, where he presided over the decline, some might say the destruction, of franchises like Call of Duty and World of Warcraft, basically robbing them of their soul in pursuit of greater profits. Then he became the president of King Digital Entertainment, which, if you don't know, is the smartphone publishing arm of Activision. So basically take everything wrong with Activision uh, and then multiply it by predatory advertising, malicious pay to not be annoyed mechanics and insipid gameplay. And you've got everything that you need to know about Humam Saknini here. His whole gaming expertise thing is exploiting gamers in the most unashamed, unabashed way, right? So mark my words, in two to five years, Discord will have uh, limits for non-subscribers to a fixed number of messages per day, or there might be like a mandatory cooldown for messaging that you can get rid of if you pay like a monthly fee or even like, you know, a 99 cent fee every other day or something like that. This is the scope of this guy's entire career. Uh, so I, so to say I don't have any respect for him would be an understatement as well. Actually, it's more like full on contempt. Any consultant bro gaming adjacent dude in the tech industry, I'm not here for. So uh, I'm not interested in what he's got to offer. But here's the thing, I'm not just basing this on the fact that Saknini has a horrible track record uh, running Activision into uh, the ground in terms of gameplay. No, I I'm also basing this on the fact that Discord wants to go public. And in order for any tech company like Discord to do that, they have to dramatically overinflate their valuation and also prove that they can exploit and actively harm their user base before they're let into the Wealth Boys Club. Now, if you're using Discord, I would suggest leaving it behind and convincing your friends to do so as well. Discord has what's called the network effect on its side. So if you're on there because your friends are on there, then you're gonna stay there because your friends are on there. But if you object to the direction that the company is heading, then um, you need to be the change you wanna see in the world and you have to be the leader in your friend group to move them away to better alternatives. 
something like Revolt. Uh, I have a Revolt server out there. Revolt is basically a free and open source alternative to Discord, and it works in very much the same way. There's still uh, some rough edges, uh, but I have a Revolt server, and if you wanna join that, there's a link down in the description. The fact is, Discord wants to go public, and there will be no limit to how far they are going to and shitify your experience. That's the first move in every tech bro company's playbook. Victimize the user. So to sum this up, uh, Discord is heading in a terrible and shitified direction. It's basically going to be pay to play, uh, pay to chat in a few years. And uh, if you don't like that, leave now. Um, there's never a better time than today to leave Discord. All right, now it's time for Deals of the Week, where we review some of the best bundles and sales to help you grow your library. First up, we have the Id and Friends bundle, and it's out now with a whole bunch of fun games. There are eight games, there's one DLC and two coupons here, totaling $28. And first up, we have Doom Eternal. If you don't own this, it's one of the best games to play on your Steam Deck. Uh, this bundle also includes the uh, Doom Eternal one-year DLC pass. They also have um, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, uh, Doom 2016. There is Doom 1 and 2, which is the Night Dive port, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, then there's Wolfenstein, the new Order, Wolfenstein, the new Blood, Doom 3, and Doom 64. Of this list, Doom 64 is actually probably my favorite, followed closely by Doom Eternal and Doom 2016. I, this is a collection of incredible games. Most of them work on the Steam Deck and many of them are incredibly great to play on the Steam Deck. Even a game like Doom 3, which is rated as unplayable, has a source port available that you can download and play through Lux Terpeta. And Lux Terpeta is awesome. I have a video about it uh, 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 over, over here somewhere. Make sure you check that out. Uh, it's an old video uh, if you want me to make a new one. Leave a, a penguin emoji down in the comments. I'd love to uh, take a new stab at that Luxter Peta video. Then there's the Return to Metroidvania bundle, which has eight games for just $14. They are uh, Grime, Berserk Boy, Biogun, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, uh, Islets, or Islets, I don't know how to pronounce that, and then uh, Astalan, the Tears of Earth, uh, Monster Sanctuary, and Gato Roboto. Now, if you're a fan of Metroidvania style titles, Shantae is awesome. It's really fun. Uh, and I'm excited to get back into this game. Now you can find a link to both of these bundles in the pinned comment below. And if you use my links, you'll be actually helping out this show at no additional cost to you, which is greatly appreciated. All right, let's get to the next story. We have Ubuntu 2504 Plucky Penguin released. And for better or worse, Ubuntu is still one of the most important, influential, and popular Linux distros out there right now. It was many folks' first uh, distribution, and it's gone through a prolonged development journey. And Ubuntu's long-standing biannual release schedule has come to fruition with version 2504, which is codenamed Plucky Puffin. This update has many new and exciting updates for us Linux gamers. Uh, number one on that list is Linux kernel 6.14. This comes with a whole slew of upgrades and chief among them is the new anti-sync driver. This has been a, a long way in the process here and uh, NT-Sync basically provides Windows NT-Sync primitives. And this means that games running through Wine should now have decent improvements when it comes to asynchronous system calls. Now, some games running through Wine see over 100% improvement when it comes to uh, their pre-NT-Sync releases. However, I should note that Proton users here are not likely to see much of an improvement if any at all, because Valve has been working on F-Sync for uh, so long. F-Sync and NT-Sync are like kind of competing technologies, kind of doing the same thing. So they're kind of on parallel tracks, NT-Sync for Wine and F-Sync for um, Proton. Overall, this is a big release for Ubuntu and I'm probably going to upgrade my desktop to uh, version 2504, though it should be noted that the rollout has been paused due to a rather large bug affecting KDE desktop right now. But hopefully they get this sorted out soon because I do wanna try games running through Wine and NT-Sync versus games running through Proton. Speaking of Wine and Valve, there is a new update here uh, for SteamOS. This is a preview update. So Valve has been hard at work uh, preparing SteamOS for the release of the upcoming uh, Legion Go S. 
Now this SteamOS preview is uh, version 3.7.4 and it's codenamed Triple Frog. And we can see here that the preview branch is coming with a bunch of fixes. And I'm actually pretty stoked about these. They fix a regression in the auto self-repair feature. They fix the performance overlay displaying some incorrect GPU metrics in level four. They fixed a crash in the bootloader on certain non-Steam Deck devices, including uh, QEMU based virtual machines, which uh, I'm probably gonna be checking that out now. But that's not the only update to the preview channel. Last week on April 25th, they also released a new preview channel build that added uh, frame rate limiting on VR displays. They fixed a crash when no displays are connected. They added support for the power button and the controllers on Asus and Lenovo handhelds. And speaking of Lenovo handhelds, uh, this is the Windows variant here. I still have Windows on here. I literally unboxed this yesterday, uh, but I'm going to be pretty soon installing SteamOS on here and uh, we're gonna try it out. And then uh, I think Lenovo is actually sending me the the SteamOS version when, uh, just before that releases. So uh, if you wanna see my review, my hands-on with the Legion Go S with SteamOS, make sure you get subscribed. There's a forthcoming unboxing video uh, and first impressions, like hands-on thing for this device exclusive to my members. You can find a link down below. And if you sign up for the newsletter, uh, you'll be one of the first people to see that video when it drops sometime this weekend, I believe. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. There's a new Steam Deck client and it was released on April 23rd and it's pretty cool. This new update includes a fix to the notes feature where changes to a note would be lost when going offline. They fixed an issue where only newly taken screenshots would appear in the screenshot list until the client was restarted. They made it so you can adjust the UI scale even on the internal display. And they fixed the SteamOS startup movie to play at the correct size. They fixed an issue with Steam Cloud where the game would launch before all files had been synchronized. And finally, they fixed a situation where compatibility review configuration would not be applied and it would result in running a game with the incorrect configuration. So some interesting work coming in SteamOS. In the preview channel, we have a major stable update for the Steam Deck, and we also had a Ubuntu new release. We've had a great week of Steam Deck news, and if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, reporting on the Steam Deck news, you can get subscribed. Uh, I want to thank my members on Patreon, my YouTube members, and my blog subscribers for their continued support. It, they truly make the work that I'm doing here a reality. If you'd like to get your name listed over here, you can use the links below uh, and help make a monthly contribution. It's all extremely appreciated. Uh, it makes what I do here a reality. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys check out my next video on Monday. It's going to be huge.